Don't never sleep on yourself, man. You know I never know what life take. You know what I'm saying? Cause really that move can be your best move. Hey, it's crazy what life takes you. If you just put your mind to it, ain't nothing to it but to do it. When it comes to excuses, it ain't none. I got a family to feed, I make a way when it ain't one. Never like one. Alright, so I am former Gator, Gator Collective member, Shannon Snell. I'm here, this is probably one of the most excited interviews I've ever done, right? Uh, because I got a lot to talk about here. I got a lot to talk about, I got a lot to address. Um, so, I got to introduce Mr. Gene Delance, the yes, starting right tackle for the Florida Gators, uh, Gator Collective athlete. Yes, um, first of all, let's, let's address this brisket, right? Because oh, you yeah. are, you're from Mesquite, Texas, right? Yeah, yeah, you're Texas from the, Texas people and they brisket is, is it's it's different. It's got to be on it's point. Different. Listen, I've, point. I've gone different places around the country, right, yeah. to study barbecue. If your brisket ain't right when you walk into when you walk across that line in the Texas, yeah, yeah, yeah. you might as well go ahead and go. go. Yeah, I mean it's, 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 it's like ain't a it. staple. <laughs> it's like a staple, so I gotta bust this thing open. You oh, gotta tell me how I did. Man. Oh my god, you killed it, dog. Bro, you killed it. I posted some pictures on Twitter it. this morning. And make sure you share this with the offensive line, because they know you yeah, got yeah, it. I tagged yeah, them. Yeah, so they are, they are they ready. Bro, that's on you. I I, I can't do nothing for it. And a lot of y'all, as I've noticed over time, I've gotten either smaller or y'all gotten bigger. So I just you know, it is what it is. So that is, that's, that's for you guys, right? You can take that with you. Appreciate it. But the real reason we're here, man, is just, so you're kind of like a, something abnormal here because, you know, you've been with the Gators for, this is be what, your third year? Or yeah, fourth, third year yeah, your third year, so yeah. yeah, your fourth year with yeah. the team. You, can, you transfer from Texas. Yes, sir. So I gotta know, I mean, you're on the University of Texas, University of Florida, two different parts of the country. Uh, two different conferences, at least for now, until Texas yeah, moves yeah. to the SEC. Um, what was it like? What was that process like when you were first recruited out of high school? Out of high school, because you're from Mesquite, Texas. Yes, you probably got a lot of pressure to go to UT, yep. go to maybe Texas A&M, somewhere, somewhere to stay in Texas, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, what was that process like for you? Why did you go to Texas? Uh, number one, and then why did you leave Texas? Well, number one, I went to Texas just because the guys I knew, the relationships, yeah. the, the comfort, and then the closeness to home. So it was all like a win-win situation. Then I went there and I loved the campus. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want Originally, I'm not going to lie, I want to go into the SEC. Off, off the beginning, I'm like, Mom, yeah, I want to go sure, to the SEC. Sure. I want to be an SEC guy. That's where like it's at. That. You know what I'm saying? That's where those big town guys at. Mm -hmm. So eventually, you know, Coach Strong, he got some of those guys and they recruited hard. They put the boys on me, being young. You know what I'm saying? You know the recruiting process going on, but you don't know, like. So you said Coach Strong. Oh, yeah, he put up. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know Coach Strong is a former Gator yeah, yeah, coordinator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, so, I mean, he had a hotbed in, in Texas and Florida. Like, he was yeah, able to kind of do yeah. that thing. Okay, go ahead. So, yeah, that's that's kind of where that went. After that, uh, it was 2016, I signed. I enjoyed it. I love Texas. Then I ended up leaving just because of coaching, you no know, change. Yeah. And I like the guys there. The, I, I love it. The environment, the city, it's nice, it's beautiful. But I just thought it was best for me to make another change for myself. So I've, I've been to you. I actually took I actually took a visit up to Austin, mm -hmm. and you're right. It's like a college football yeah. town. It kind of like you walk in there, everybody's like hook them and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Like you get what you want. Yeah, hey, you get man, that orange and black and orange and white and everything everywhere. And you see Bevo and you see all that yeah, stuff. So they're, they're really see. crazy about football yeah. in Texas. And even in high school, which I didn't realize, is that so dumb. You probably yeah, you probably can speak on this better than anybody. I thought Florida high school football was great. I thought. California high school football was great, but that's like light. They shut down towns. They shut down town. I mean, they shut down schools. Like the prom, homecoming, so homecoming. So that's, no, that's not bullshit. Like oh, I, no, that's not I watch bullcrap, Friday night. Man. I watch Friday night lights, like the series and the movie. They're and that's so real serious. Deal. I'm talking about 60, 70 thousand people stadiums like Allen. I'm, what? I'm telling you, it's big time. Like the playoffs, big time. Like they take it serious all the way. One eight two eight three eight six eight all the way up. I think they got seven eight now. So I mean, yeah, takes football, big time football, but. I, I, I say those top three, okay. California, Texas, yeah, I, Florida. Yeah, okay, and, and you're right. And, yeah. and just, but I, I do think, I, I hate to say it because I'm a Florida boy, I hate to say it, but I think Texas is on top of the heat because just so many people are, like, invested in, in, that, in that high school area, in that high school thing. Yeah, they all, right. everybody, it's a whole, I'm talking about the communities, the teachers, the, the police officers, everybody's invested in putting into the school. Athletics. So everything that we see on TV is kind of like it's more intense. I mean, when you get there and they're like, hey, man, we, we 
It's like college almost to a sense. You get really? some coaches like that, yes. I mean, uh, and, and that probably is a surprising because there's a lot of cities in Texas that are like uninhibited and it's nothing but just families yeah, 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 and, yeah. and the football yeah. stadium and the high school football yeah. stadium, right? It's not like, you know, there's always like if, if you go down to the muck in Miami, shout out to Silk. Like if you go down to muck in Miami, like you got the nightlife, you got, you know, University of Miami, which they're not really yeah, yeah, good yeah. right now, but you got a lot of stuff going on down there in Texas. It's pretty much high school football, college football, and that's there's not like basketball may rule yeah, in a yeah. couple and years. You got your Cowboys, school. yeah, and the Cowboys. hard Cowboys, and, uh, and from there on, you a Cowboys fan? Yeah. Hey man, I love the Cowboys. Okay, cool. If, nah, yeah, see, I'm a dog hard Cowboys the fan. Thing. I'm a Cowboy. Hey, I love the Cowboys. Any scouts I, watching I, this? Hey man, I love how they doing this year. Any scouts that watch? <laughs> me too. Any scouts watching this? He's a Cowboy. Just saying. Okay, so. so you, you decide to leave Texas, right? Yes, sir. You're just like, hey, it's not a fit for me after your freshman year. It's just uh, you played a couple of games. Yeah, I did play um, a couple of games. Burnt so, my red shirt. Yeah, burnt your red shirt, which kind of sucks because, yeah, uh, sucks you know, the red shirt year is really for you to kind of get stronger, bigger, faster, yeah, kind of get acclimated ball. classes. Yeah. So what? why did you choose Florida? Because Florida was in a little bit of a transition at that point in time too. Okay, my, my decision-making – process was based off family. Uh, I'm from Georgia. I was born in Georgia. Mm -hmm. So I moved to Texas around nine. Okay. All my family's from the East Coast. So like we just moved to Texas for you know, business decisions and you know, work. Yeah. So kind of my family, my immediate family all stay out there now. My whole family stay on the East Coast, Georgia, Florida, all the way up to Virginia, okay. New York as well. So like it was just better for me and I wanted to go to the SEC. So at the time, I think I couldn't go to LSU. They blocked me from going to LSU. Yeah. Couldn't go to a you know what I mean? So Makes I was sense. like, okay. Boom, Florida. I think that's it. And uh, it came out of Florida and a couple other SEC schools. I ain't gonna say it. Okay. And so I was like, boom, okay, this this, this the place. I got on the phone. I like the coaches, the coaches, I like the guys. I knew Tez kind of a little bit. Sure. I've been following Tez. Tez is a good dude. Yeah. So I was following Tez for some years before that. And uh, I started talking to him. And it was kind of like, okay, this this might be the fit for me. So, like when you said, so tell me about that. before we get into like the Florida part. Tell me about the recruiting portal. What is that like? Is that like a is that like going through recruiting all again as a high school thing, or is there people that call you, or is there people allowed to call Man, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, coming here from Texas to Florida, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was crazy. It was crazy. And I'm talking about in a matter of hours when people put it out, hey, this guy's transferring from transferring from Texas to Florida. I mean, mm -hmm. phone buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. Really? And I, it was kind of like, okay, I, I don't. I've been through this process before. Right. It's not like I want to get here and wind and down. I yeah. just need to figure out where I want to go, what's best for me, and what's going to put me in the best position sure. for my career. So I wasn't looking for no wine and dine and like cake me up, sauce me up. Hey man, this is what we got for sure. you. Sure. No, keep it real with me. Tell me what we're gonna do and like, what's the education? What is the fit like when I get there? What's the scheme? You know, what's the what's the guys like? How's that team overall? So at that point, I was like, okay, I'm pretty mature. I know what I'm gonna get myself into. No, I'm not. I know what coaches like to say. I know how they want to wine. They gonna get you there, but do you really want me? Yeah. Do you need me? So that was like, okay, boom. That's my decision making point. You know, I think that's super important. And you said it your best. It's like, you know, a lot of times, even for recruits, if you're a recruit watching this or whatever, yeah. is that a lot of times you're sold on a dream. It's a lot, a lot of bullshit, right? Yep. It's a lot of bullshit. Like, you know, you, know, you go on those recruiting visits, you get five of them or whatever. You go on them, you enjoy you yourself, you, you eat hear. the they, best. They give you what you want to hear. You know what? And, and the best thing that any person could do is tell you the truth about what it's really like when you get there. Yeah. And I can say this maybe about Florida, is that Florida – did a really good job, at least under the Mullen era, right? Yeah. They did a really good job of not selling you on a dream. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons I joined Florida when Spurrier was here is because Spurrier told me, he's like, hey, you'll have the opportunity to play football. Um, you have the opportunity to get a degree, um, but that's dependent on you. That's totally up to you. Yeah, and so and I, maybe the same message was given to you and why yep. you decided to choose Florida. Yeah, yeah very, very much so. And it, and it was very straight line. It wasn't no sauce you hey man like we need you here we don't sure. you know what I'm saying we need the depth we need you to come in and play we got Tez we got this guy we got this guy yeah. and this is what we're looking to have the year after that unfortunately those guys were still here but hey it worked out for me sure so yeah okay so <laughs> let's move into let's move into the Florida years let's move into 2019 when you first became a full-blown starter full-time yeah, yes, starter sir. right you're replacing Jawan Taylor right mm -hmm. JT was one of those guys was a three-star guy or yeah. you know two-star and he kind of worked his way into a should have been a first rounder. We let's be real. Yeah. Uh, it was a second rounder uh, for Jacksonville, and you then have to step in and fill in some big shoes, right? Because yeah. he played well. I mean, yeah. he put in the work. He did a lot of stuff. He did a lot of stuff that you had to, um, you know, had to kind of maybe mimic. Because yeah. I mean, that Mullen offense after that year, I, I don't think it, going back to it, the last time we seen what we saw maybe a, a, in an offense like we did like we do this year was been on. A lot of run and a lot of pass was 2018. It was a nice little bit of a yeah, mix, yeah, right? Yeah. 
Um, but 2019 comes along and you're now a full-time starter, yeah. right? You're thrown into it. And when I say full-time, like you hadn't had the, the opportunity, like you you were in Texas, right? Yeah. You then come in and, and, and you play at, you know, you come in as a, a transfer at Florida, yeah. don't get to play because of the transfer yeah. rules, yeah. right? Then you finally, in 2000, you get to watch JT and stuff. 2019, you came rolling in. This is really your first time playing yeah. real-time college Big football. And, football. And let's, let's be real. And you probably can speak on it better than anybody, yeah. but SEC is a little bit different. Way different. It, okay, it's way different. Am Fact I right? I think everybody knows is that. And it's, it's <laughs> more different. Part of this year, I can't say that, hey, this ain't the Big 12. Bro, <laughs> it, it's really evident on the edges, right? Yeah, you play yeah, right yeah, tackle yeah. is that – you got defensive ends that probably can keep up with running backs, yeah, right? Yeah. Running four sixes, four fives. And easy. Very easy, right? So game one, game one out the gate. What are you thinking? What, like, what is your mindset? Because you're basically in a new offense. Until the bullets start flying live, you don't really know how shit's going to be, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you thinking? How did you, how do you feel you performed in that first year in 2019? I think I performed decent. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be very honest, but I'm, I'm very critical to myself. And sure. I'm very honest. Like, I, hey, your biggest critic got to be yourself. And honesty is best policy with yourself. So I'm over there, and I, I think I, I did decent. Now, I, could I have done way better? I think so. Could I put in more air, time and more things in different places sure. to have even better two last two years? I think so. Uh, I would say that, like, being on those lights from that day, that first game, yeah. I had to, like, really settle, like, okay, boom, this is where I'm at. I'm playing. And the first game was Miami. So I'm like, oh, yeah. my God. And in, in, in freaking Orlando. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in like, Orlando. This, it was a big-time game. Like, everybody, Florida, Miami, Florida, Miami. So I'm like, okay, settle down, be cool, collect it. I don't have to be Juwan. I can be Gene. Now, do I look up to one? That's my best. That's my homeboy. Best, you yeah. know what I'm saying? One of my best friends. My dudes, man. You know what I'm saying? I talked to him. He like, bro, just be you, bro. Be you. Be yeah. who you is. And I'm like, okay, bro, I got this. So after that, I was like, okay, I'm going to just be Gene. And being Gene, it, it worked. But as I do, I, do I need to criticize and be more – Determined in my game, that's why. That's why I think I toned in that. Well, I think I think even going back to it, I remember this because I was standing on the sidelines at, in the, in Orlando. I remember that block on Tony's first touchdown mm -hmm. run you, uh, on that quick screen that yep. you got yeah, out yeah, there yeah, and led yeah. that thing. I was like, oh shit, you know, yeah. we got we got a player, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got we got some stuff to happen. And you probably went throughout that whole season. There was up and up, ups and downs, yeah. right? I don't think anybody realizes. And you, and I played guard, right? I played guard in, in college. I was moved to right tackle in in the league, which. Wow. It's a different different world, yeah. all right? You an are island. on an island. Yep. Things happen. And I don't think anybody says – and when a pressure happens, and I, we say this about offensive linemen all the time, if you never get your name called, it's a good thing, it's a good thing right? Yeah. The only time you get your name called is by an announcer that you'll never hear on, on CBS or, a, or ESPN, or if you're doing a penalty. If yep. the ref's calling you for a penalty, you're never, right? That ain't too good. Yeah, like, so okay, cool. a lot of times people will always see, and, you know, with the offensive line, it's like five blocking is one, yeah. right? Because if it doesn't matter if you block well if, if – if Ethan decides, if he messes up, it's, it's, we it's all done. Affected. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If, if Kingsley messes up, you're all affected. Yeah. You all look bad, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I think it goes hand in hand. Nobody wakes up, and I told him, he's like, when you sign a scholarship for the University of Florida or any school around the country, nobody wakes up and be like, damn, I just want to miss this block today. No. Shit happens, right? Yeah, because yeah. other people on the other side, they get scholarships yeah. too, yeah. right? Yeah, you win one-on-one -on -one battles, yeah. right? Okay. So, with that being said, uh, before I want to, before we walk into 2020, because 2020 was abnormal between COVID yeah. stuff happening, you guys didn't have a bunch of padded practices. You had to wear masks everywhere. There was yeah. stuff that you know there was stuff getting shut down left and right. I do want to say, I do want to ask, do you ever do you ever read the stuff on social media? And, and this is this is a question, and, and this is a question that is always said, hey, they're they're not watching, they're not looking, they don't see our comments, yada 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 yada, because you know. Yeah. I, Florida is a very rabid fan base. Oh, yeah. They're cra crazy, borderline crazy, right? <laughs> um, but do you ever get on there and you read these comments and you're just like, man, does it really affect you? Or do you really kind of like, hey, I just got to brush it off? I'm going to be very honest. Last time I went, went on there and got very quick, like, just looked at that stuff, yeah. it was probably about last year, November. Okay. And I promised myself going into 2021, I wasn't doing that no more. And I said, you know what, that's motivation, fuel to the fire to make me. You know what I'm saying? Go out here and be a bit. That's what made me come back. I'm like, no, nah, I can't go out like this, bro. I ain't going out like okay, this. Okay, so, so let me jump forward here because, you know, you had the opportunity to go on and do whatever, go on to uh, enter the NFL draft and go on and be a you know, free agent, whatever you wanted yeah. to do. But you decided to come back. Yeah. I wanted to jump ahead there because that was a that was a pretty gutsy decision. And, I, you know, a lot of people get into this mode or get into this thing of, like, I need to come out. I need to go make yeah, money. Yeah, I need to come yeah, out. I need yeah, to make yeah, money. Yeah. What you did, and I don't want to kind of prelude or jump ahead too far because you're kicking ass this year, and we will talk about that. 
uh, you've gotten significantly better. If, if anybody says, hey, the most improved award to the point that you're now in the conversation of being in the top, you know, top two, two days of the NFL draft is you, right? So why did you decide to come back? Well, I mean, because you had the opportunity. You're a smart guy, right? Yes, we, if anybody watching this right now knows you're well spoken. Yes, sir. You got a good personality. You're a good looking dude. So, you could go on to do something else. You could go on to play football. Um, why did you decide to come back to Florida, and w when you could have easily just kind of walked away from it? The promise to myself, yeah. and the promise to the to Gator fans, honestly. And I talked sat down, talked to Coach Muller and Coach Hevesy, and it was very honest. Like, hey, you, 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 you can you can you can you can get to the you're gonna get there. You're gonna get there. Now the the question is staying there, but you're going to get there just off athleticism and your ability. Sure. And I was, that was, okay, coach, I appreciate that. But coach, now I'm coming back. That's, that's the best decision for you, Gene. Come back. Get to work. I think, I think that's, I think that's phenomenal. Like yeah. your, that story could, you could resonate that to hundreds, if not thousands of guys across the country that think, oh, you know, I'm just going to move on and I don't need this. And bro, this college, this college lifestyle, which especially at Florida, you only live that shit once. Once. You only live it once. once. Like you need to live it up and you know, you need to live every day like it's like it's your last, yeah. especially in college, because yeah. you take it for granted. You do. Right? Think you're getting about this. free meals, you get getting chips. Bro. You don't have to worry about paying your own rent. Think about this so real quick. After that, you're walking into the real world. I, I am a, I'm a little bit jealous <laughs> because when I used to have, I would have to eat over a gator diner every day. <laughs> Y'all fools are, are always eating. They always bring food in. Yeah, they get bringing food Snacks. In. Listen, you know. Yeah. Who wants to, I'm not saying, because obviously we all have to grow up yeah, sometime, yeah, yeah. right? But at, at the same point is that when you have put so much hard work, and this is exactly why we do the Cater Collective, right? Yes, a lot of people talk about, you know, what is this for, what is this about? It really is about supporting guys like you, giving you stuff that I didn't have. It's like, I want you to make money. I want Gene to be able to walk out of here with $100,000 in his pocket before he even thinks about going to the NFL. Not the fact that he has a struggle to get to the NFL just to make that money or get out of here and try to get a job that he's never had because he wasn't allowed to in college, right? Your five years, you know, they say, hey, you know, football's a year-round sport. Yeah. By the time you get out of your bowl game, which Florida's always in the New Year's Bowl, you're not gonna have, you're, you're gonna be in all-season training activities. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. be, Savage yeah. is gonna be running your balls under the dirt yeah. and everything. We know that, right? Yeah. So you don't have the time to do that. So this is, uh, this, this cause is to support, and of course we would always want you to pass it forward. This cause is to support you, to support every Gator Collective athlete that, that needs to make some money. Yeah. This is like a this is like a job because you know being here with me, which I always appreciate. Yes, you don't you don't have to get up here and come up here yeah, and, yes, and do this. No, and it, it, the, the, you know the feeling is mutual. Like yeah. honestly, because it's at some point the the concrete grounding has to be set. Somebody has to start it. You, you have to start somewhere. You have to start my, somewhere. My, my mom and my dad always said. Preach that. Yeah, they said you have to start somewhere. Whenever you know I, we're we're in Sunnies right now. If everybody's wondering, we're sitting at a bar. We're not actually drinking or anything. <laughs> <laughs> we should, but we, we ain't. But like you know, when whenever I was when I when I was a GM of this location, I had people walk in and they say, "Hey, I don't have any experience," and trying to get in the door, trying to do stuff, and then and I always tell them, "Hey, you know, got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere, gotta start somewhere, somewhere. right?" So let let's get to let's get to a 2020 out the window because I don't want to I don't want to talk about bullshit. I want to yeah. talk about the the you and the real you of what we're seeing right now, right? We didn't know what to expect. I mean, I got to be honest. I, I was hopeful of the offensive line. I've always stuck. I always stood in you guys' yeah, back yeah. pockets, and yeah, there's been a lot yeah. of people that, that have been the same way because I know the life of an offensive lineman. Yeah. I know people are just clearly it's like, hey, you never get any gut, like, never get any glory. And you know what it's like in the trenches. It, it You've is. been there. It's, it's so dirty. Like, if it's, I want criticism, I'll take yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. You'll be the first person. Exactly. It's a dirty <laughs> place. It's a nasty place. It's a place where it's not glamorous. You're not going to touch the ball. You're not going to get oh. touchdowns unless it's like a fluke. But it is a place that you live and you die and you get no recognition. You yeah. have to be okay with yeah. that, right? Yeah. So let's talk to coming off of 2020, you maybe kind of maybe took a step back from 2019, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody knew what to expect. And I think the position that was probably most scrutinized was the right tackle position because now you have a new starter. You had Kyle Trask back there in 2020, or yeah, 2020, a uh, guy that was able to throw the ball around the field. And, and yeah. even for you, you came from a system and you came from maybe a program in high school where you didn't have to drop back and protect 50 times a game. And people don't understand. Those two corners, they get paid the most. If you're in the, if yeah. you're in the NFL, the left tackle and the right tackle, depending on the side your quarterback's throwing it from, they get paid the most money. Yeah, depending on, yeah. Because you are the guy that's always on the island, yep. right? If you're a guard, you get some help from the center. Yeah, if yeah. you're a center, you're definitely getting help yeah, from a guard, guard. Yep. right? But if you're a tackle, you'd be like, hey, you got to always win the one-on-one -on -one battle. Ninety percent time, you're one-on-one. -on -one. Right. Yeah. So, so and you make it a chip from a running back every now and no, again, right? But you were counted on in 2020 to drop back 50 times a game. Was that that was that had to be tough. I know it was. It was tough, and I, I'm glad I did that because it, it actually helped me realize where my weaknesses and my strengths were. 
going coming into this year, like, okay, this is what I need to focus on off season, yeah. all off season. Yeah. This is what I need to work on, my bending, my flexibility, my strength, my core strength, my you know what I'm saying? All the little things that people don't know that office linemen need to work on. You know what I'm saying? It's right. easy to, you know what I'm saying, hey, it's what they need to do mm -hmm. schematically. Okay, but do you know how this player works, how his body works, how his, you know what I'm saying? How, how can he move? How does he bend? Do he need to work on this a little bit better to get in this location? You know what I'm saying? So all those things came to a point. And I, I dropped him back, you know what I'm saying? Kyle, I love him. I love him. Sure. I love him. Sure. I love that whole office line we had. I love him. Same, most of those guys gone, I still love him, bro. But at, I'm very happy that we did that because it helped me see, like, where I need to improve. Yeah. Where, the, where, the, where am I weak? Where am I mentally need to sharpen myself? And, so. you know, and here's the thing, bro, is that it's not that you had to improve. It's like if anybody in the offense, like I played under a Steve Spurrier offense, that they dropped back and threw the ball 35, 36 times a game. It was tough, man. It was it was just really, yeah. you know, it was tough to – when you're an offensive lineman, you don't like to receive blows, right? You like yeah. to kind of run block yeah. and, and give them out sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or keep it balanced so that yeah. you're keeping the defense guessing, yeah, right? Yeah, keeping on their feet. I don't want to talk about 2020. That's that's the end of yeah, 2020 yeah. because now we, we're talking 2021, right? Um, once again, going back to it, nobody knew what to expect. You came back. I think – for me personally, I was I was excited. I never like to break in the right tackle without having some experience behind it, yes, right? Sir. You were you have been our guy for like the last at that point in time, the last two years, yes, haven't been really replaced. Um, I saw way more good than I saw bad, right? I saw way more good. I was like this this this, this guy's on the potential of like breaking out. Yeah, yeah. And I remember doing a podcast, and somebody said, you know, well, you know, the Lance, and they were saying something like that. I was like, it would it would be the best thing in the world if he came out. Game one, game two, or even game three against Alabama stuck yeah. it to you guys. Yeah. It would be funny if he came out and stuck it to you guys. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put that next to my name. I'm gonna be, he's going to come out and stick it to you guys. So game one, FAU, game two, USF, right? Yeah. I don't know if it was just an abnormal thing or it was a competition, but you played some pretty damn good games, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, to the point, like, you were busting guys, and the offense was a little yeah, bit different, yeah. right? You wouldn't, yeah. Emory wasn't back there throwing 30 times or, or 40 times, and yeah, AR yeah. wasn't back there throwing yeah. at me. Like, there was some some options. There was some zone reads. There was a lot of yeah. running the ball, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which had become – it had been very apparent over, like, the first two games that the offensive line had become a strength, and more specifically, that right tackle spot. Yeah, yes, sir. Right? There was, there was times I see you down block a guy, get up and start, like, going crazy. Yeah. I'm like, maybe we're seeing the real – Gene Delance yeah. here, right? With a real, real Gene Delance stand up, right? Yeah. Real Slim Shady. I, I, we, we started seeing that. And then we get to Alabama. And I said, okay, well, shit, this is the first true test, right? I mean, because, yeah. you know, they were talking about this linebacker all yeah. week, how great he was yeah. and how, you know, and even our own guys, even our own fans talking about how oh, this guy's, I mean, has he stats, you know, yeah, getting yeah, sacks, putting up shit. Yeah. I was like, it's a little bit different yeah. when you have somebody hitting you in the mouth when Alabama's not up, mm -hmm. right? The very first drive of the game, I remember tweeting out that, I said, you did something to somebody. You down blocked somebody, and you got up celebrating. And we yeah, were still, yeah, we were down yeah. like you know seven yeah. to nothing or something. You down blocked somebody. I was like, okay, offensive line is hitting people in the mouth. Yeah. I was going to talk about you more specifically. And even up until now, right? We're we're about to go into LSU. You know, you just got off a of plane. Um, you guys just got off of playing a really good game against. Um, you guys played against Tennessee. You guys played against Alabama. You know, even the loss to Kentucky. Yeah. Right, you still played a pretty good game. What changed for you? Like, I, I, this wasn't an overnight thing. I know that because yeah. you probably put in the work in the offseason, right? You probably put in the work uh, when nobody was looking, yeah. right? Which was probably the best thing. But what, what really changed for you, bro? Because, and I think that's really important. And I think everybody needs to see this because so much shit was talked, and now it's like it's, you seem like a very humble individual. Yeah, yeah, so I will talk the yeah, shit yeah, for yeah. you. Um, you kind of you kind of pie faced everybody. And be like, look at me now. Where that your name hasn't been called a whole lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. and if it has been called, it's been like, damn, look at the ball off the right tackle. Yeah, look yeah. at you know Pierce running off a right tackle. Look at you know you know whoever running off a right tackle. Yeah, look yeah. at the protection, yeah. right? Because the protection, you're like one, two, three. You're supposed to only give three seconds of protection, right? Yeah, yeah. The guy's been, there. What changed for you, bro? Let, let, that that is the million dollar question. What the what, what changed? What the happened? Mentality. The mentality. The mentality. I think. With the mature and over time, like, hey, bro, I can I can go out there and hit people in the face too. I don't have to receive the blows no more. It's the mentality, and I think the grit and the determination to say, you know, what I'm saying, I, all the comments and stuff. You hear it? You go, I heard it. I heard it. It's fuel to the fire. Flame it up. Let's go. Because at some point, you got to be like, you can't be scared of, you know, what I'm saying, of, how should I say this? You can't be scared of 
that that friction. You sometimes gotta be the friction. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna set the, I'm gonna set the tone. I'm gonna show you that I can do this. I'm gonna show you that I can be an aggressive player. I can be, you know what I'm saying? And I think for more so than anything, I had to prove it to myself. I, everything I do, I gotta prove it to myself first. I ain't gotta prove it to nobody. I gotta prove it to Gene. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because who you, who you out there? Who you, who you proving, bro? If you can't prove it to yourself, yourself don't believe that you're worth what you, what you really worth, or that you can do. It don't work. It's not gonna work. If you out there playing for side of side and side of side, you all messed up, bro. Because yeah. you got to play for yourself first, then you got to play for the guys beside you and the man behind you. Yeah. And then after that, everything started lining up. And I think that's where I, I got that grit and that determination to, hey, bro, I'm going to deliver the blows. You're going to feel me. So that's where it came down. Does it does it feel different? Because it, you, you clearly are playing better, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, you know, I, I talked to Ethan about this. I've talked to pretty much a lot of people, even maybe some inside the program. I was like, it, does it feel different? It feels different. I, I can give credit to the guys beside me because them, them boys some dogs. But you got a whole five guys, four of the guys on the line beside you that's dogs. Yeah. That get down there and we train, we train hard. We ain't scared. Like yeah. we, we, we train against the D lineman and we we up there neck and neck with them competing. Which is, which is like, the which is which is the best D line in the SEC. Hey, Let's like, call it. I mean, I know y'all challenge. I'm gonna give them boys the credit on the other side of the ball. There's some dogs. So at spring training, summer training, all that up until this point, I can give credit to the guys beside me and the guys across me because they some dogs. You got Newkirk, you got Zach, you got yeah. Javon. You know what I'm saying? You got the edge guys, Brent Cox, Chris Bogle. I, mean, I can keep going on and on. Sure. Like them, them, and it's coming together. And their, their athletic ability, and the guys now they're older, they know the system. Like when you out there going against them, it's different. You seeing some of the best guys in the country. So now it's like, okay, boom. And I got these guys on. We like, nah, bro, we finna win today. Yeah. Today, okay, we're gonna win this first period of this going against the defense. Okay, now we're gonna come back and do it again. We're gonna win that part of the day against the defense the second sure. period. So it was just like, bro. I give it some credit to them guys. They some dogs. Like that's what made me bring it out. So yeah, I give credit to them. Talk about John Hevesy. Mm -hmm. Talk about him for a second. He's a, he's a good dude, right? Because I feel like offensive line coaches are different. Yeah. Like anywhere you go, offensive line coach is probably like the guy that's not gonna talk to you and pat you on your ass yeah, and tell nah. you gonna. No, nah, that's not him. It doesn't nah. feel like him. And that's the kind of coaches I like, right? Yeah. I, I've had offensive line coaches that have been way different from the offensive coordinator, different from the head coach, different from everything. There is a specific breed. Yeah. Talk about Hevesy, because yeah, no, you've, right. you've been under him for as long as he's been at Florida, mm -hmm. right? Y'all got, y'all have a good relationship. Tell you me do. about how he, how he's helped you. You do, uh, and this how, this how you gotta accept his coaching. His coaching is gonna get you for the, ready for the next, next level. That's where you wanna be. That's the guy you wanna play for, because he's gonna give you the same type of coaching. He's gonna work the same techniques. He's gonna tell you, bro, that's not, that's not what they're looking for. This is not what we're looking for. So okay, let's do it again, and fix it till you get it correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So, I mean, his, like, the way he coaches is way different. And young guys, they come in, they, okay, one month, ah, oh, they kind of tough. All right, month, two, month, three. All right, Coach Hibbs, he gonna he'll give you a little smirk and he'll smile at you, but he's going to get on you way harder. And you got to take the, the good away from the bad because, you know what I'm saying, he's going to get his words in there. Yeah. He's going to let you know how he feel. Yeah, you messing, you're messing up, and then yeah. I'm going to tell you how to fix it. And you take that part. You take that small part. Okay, Coach, I'm going to fix that. That's, that's all I need to hear. You don't listen to everything else because he, he's a coach. He's yeah, going to get on you. He got to ride you. Yeah, all line coach. Well, you want somebody, good job, sir. This is how you do this. This is how you block it and sit back and right. have your hands and punch. No, coach. Get on me hard. So it took me some time to get used to it. And I watched how Wani and Tez and all those guys took it. And Tyler Jordan and Brett, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All, and it works. It works. Like, you got to take the good from the bad, listen to what he's saying, and take the message. The message. That's what all these young guys get. And now the guys, like, they're good with it. Young guys come in. They, Two, three weeks, like, okay, that's Coach Davis. Yeah, you know, I, I, I really firmly believe is that he's done, he's got his guys in place, right? Mm -hmm. uh, take over time now. You had Tez and Wani. You had, a, you know, a lot of guys that were talented. Let's yeah, just call them yeah, with yeah. They were talented. Um, but in year, what, year four, yeah. I think he's got the line he wants. Yeah. And it's really showing off because unless the offensive line and, and you know, the graduation of, of, of Pitts, the graduation of Kyle, the graduation of, um, of some of the receivers, um, so there's a lot of experience on the offensive line, but yeah. you guys are performing well. It's yeah. not like even like, hey, you know, you know, if we sh if, if Florida struggle, which maybe in the Kentucky game it was a little bit of a struggle, right? But it was because the offensive line there was maybe a position that lost the battle, or yeah. there was something that happened. When you always know just as much as I do, yeah. it's like, and the reason why I think you guys have became such a great unit is because you're five blocking this one now, right? Yeah. Yep. It takes one guy to mess up to yeah. make the whole line look bad, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 if yeah. one guy has a bad game, everybody yeah, has, has a bad, bad game. game. Right, that's, that's very apparent. So I, I think over the, the majority of the season, every game but one, that the offensive line has been the strength of the offense. Yeah. And that was made to that was made note like 
it was told like, okay, this this experience that has this group has the most experience. You guys mm -hmm. got to step up. Mm -hmm. This is year four. Mm -hmm. Like we got some young guys in the mix, but them guys y'all carry them, and we're gonna we're gonna pick each other up. And so like you got Richard that has multiple starts. You got mm -hmm. Ethan that has get thrown in the mix. You got me, and you got Stu. Like okay, mm -hmm. why can't this guy, this group has to perform? There's no if ands or buts. So with that that like that on our shoulders, we knew we had to do it. It wasn't no if ands or buts. And it's you and Stu because y'all got the most starts, not minus Rich. I think Rich yep, may yep, have. Yep. To, but you you two are like really kind of like the guys that have really been yep. through the battle tested fires. Um, and it's really shown. I mean, you run it off a right tackle. I was like shit. That ain't a surprise because yep. I mean these guys are mashing people, right? All right. So let's, let's not talk about the goals that's inside the the goals that need to stay there because yeah, yeah, yeah. even even at now at this point, um, SEC still in sight. That's yeah. that's not that's not a dead issue. But what are, what are the goals for Gene Delance? Because right now, I mean, this conversation last year is a little bit different. But this conversation this year is like, damn, this dude's a pro prospect. I was actually, you know, a couple of days ago, I was looking at something. I was just reading something on you and. It was very glowing review. I'm not trying to blow smoke up your ass because you still got work to do, right? You still got things that you need to accomplish. But what are your what are your goals? What, I mean, what do you want to do moving forward? I mean, obviously, do you want to take this to the next level, or are you like, hey, you know, if football works out great. If not, then I got a backup plan. Or like, what, what's your goals, man, for, for goal, the next couple of years? Yeah, the goal is the next level. No. That's, that is the goal, and the goal is to get there and stay there. Yeah. However, I get there, I'm not worried about how I'm getting there. I'm making sure I want to stay there and do everything I can to stay there for as long as possible. But before we even get there, the remainder of the season, we gotta we gotta handle these, you know what I'm saying? Week by week, day by day. And that's how I wake up every morning. Day by day, I get up, say my prayers, brush my teeth, day, I'm taking day by day because every day you don't know what you got. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what's gonna smack me in the face for that day. I gotta come ready, prepare for anything. So and I take it day by day, week by week. I don't I try not to, you know what I'm saying? Cause getting ahead of yourself too much sometimes is not the best. You know, you have those goals, you have those, you know, in the back of your head by day by day, week by week. And that's how I kind of set my, I organize my life like that now. Instead of like, I got to do this, I got to do that to get myself here. Sure. You don't, you don't, you don't have to do that right now. Worry about today and then worry about the week and you'll worry about next week. And that's how I kind of been set myself up. But the goal is the next level. I ain't coming. Nobody does this for no, you know what I'm saying? Nobody yeah. does this. Like, oh, yeah, I don't get it. I don't want to go. No, I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean? I want to go, man. I'm hungry. All right. Nobody does this for none of that. But yeah, that's, that's the goal. That's the goal. Okay, so. Talking for a minute now, so I got, I got, I got, I got to. Like, I, I need you, right? Because sometimes I feel like the uh, unofficial mouthpiece of certain parts of Florida football. I, I, I can say what you guys can't, right? And even at this point, you know, I, I, I still will do that, right? Yeah. But, uh, what, what do you want? What do you want the average fan, the average person watching, the person that says, "Hey, I only see what I see on TV. I only see the bad plays." Um. The criticizer, the semi-supporter. What do you want to say to any Gator fan kind of watching this about, you know, even losing a couple of games, right? Because I, we firmly believe, like, you know, we talk about it in all kinds of weather, right? That's a, the, the Florida Gator theme in all kinds of weather. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter if it, it doesn't matter if it's raining. It doesn't matter if it's snowing. It doesn't matter if we lose a game. It doesn't matter if we win a game. Whatever it is. Yeah. What's your, what is your message to Gator Nation? Because generally, we don't, you don't ever get to say what you want to say. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to tell everybody right now, he's still going to keep it PC because, I mean, yeah. there's people inside the program yeah. that will watch this, right? Because we don't want to we don't want to get there, right? But what, what do you want to say, bro? Because this is your, this is your opportunity to say, hey, look. And, and, and for me, I was like, I'm so happy that you pie face everybody. That you came out and you've probably been arguably our best lineman, right? You've arguably been our best lineman, definitely been the most improved player on the team. That's just what it is, right? But what do you want to say to anybody that's watching this and anybody that's on the fence about what's happened here with, with yeah. Kentucky or the fact of, you know, SEC's loss. What do you want to say to them right now? The support is much needed. Is we, we love it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then we, 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 we come out there with intentions to win. We don't have no other intentions but to win. Thank you. We don't want to hurt. We don't want Thank to disappoint you. ourselves. We don't want to disappoint the fan base and everybody else. But I will say that I thank you all for it helping groom players along the way, even though, you know, the good and the bad needs to be spoken on because some guys need to hear and need to know that, hey, you're not, you're not the best player. You're not the best thing since piece of bread. You're not, you know what I'm saying? You have a much improvement. So that's very much, uh, I appreciate that. And I think the whole, the guys will appreciate that as well. I think, Being I, honest. Yeah, I think that I think that's important. And, and, you know, the good news is that there will be some people that will say, hey, look, man, you ain't doing your thing or, no, there's, there's just some things that people say on that thing, and, and people will be real with you, right? Yeah. Some people will be real with you, but you said it number one best is that support is always needed. I, yeah. You know, we've been through times, and, 
Anybody remember, remembers the damn Jim McElwain years or the, the Ron Zook years or the stuff that really got ugly? Like, you know, what, what Dan Mullen did, and I understand is that we need to win championships and we, we need to win, you know, conference titles and all that stuff, right? That's, that's the obvious goal. Nobody, when, we, when you signed to Florida, you said, hey, this is what I want to do yeah. and this is what, I, what the goal is, right? So, but, you know, shit, shit happens, right? Yeah, shit yeah, happens. You does. wake up in the morning, you can stub your toe. And, you know, oh. you're going to have a stub toe yeah. for the rest of the day, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's broke. Something happens, right? You wake up in the morning and you fall out of bed, something happens, or you wake up and something great happens. But regardless of the fact is that, you know, even for myself or anybody that's kind of looking at this, watching this, guys need support, yeah. right? I, Dan, Dan wakes up in the morning, hugs his wife, kisses his kids and all that stuff, and he yeah. wants to coach a great game, right? Um, a lot of criticism, while, while people should be passionate about Gator football, yeah. right? They should be passionate. Nobody wants somebody to be like, oh, just kind of sit there. Yeah, yeah. You guys still want the support yeah. of Gator Nation because it feels good running out when you have 90,000 people in front of that stands. I, I know it yeah, gave you yeah, goosebumps. Yeah, yeah. Your first game when you were in the swamp, when you, 2019, when you were actually in, in, the, yeah, in, the, in, the, in the thing, right, yeah. in Miami, yeah. when it was half, half stadium because there was probably more Gator fans yeah, there, yeah. right? It gave you goosebumps, right? Yeah, yeah you're and, nervous. And that, you're that, yeah, that kind of goes without saying, bro. It's just so if you're like watching this. And one reason I stand behind these guys, I don't really, I don't really give a shit. I've been a part of uh, five, ten. <laughs> uh, I probably lost twenty times when I was playing at the University of Florida. Twenty times, bro. Uh, maybe less. Or eighteen. Eighteen times at the <laughs> University of Florida, right? But all eighteen of them, I, I didn't. I was part of it, right? I was part of the reason we lost, but I still wanted to support. I didn't go out there to do bad. Yeah. Right. And I, I think everybody needs that. But so they watch, guys. They watch. They listen. They hear. They know. Um, but, but you can see just clearly your motivation is you wanting to do well. Yeah, yes, sir. You wanting to be do well for Gene DeLance. You wanting to do well for your family and, and for Gator Nation. Yeah. That's what's up, man. That's, that's exactly what it is. That's what's up, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate, Appreciate you coming in, man. Al always, man. See you guys next time. Thank you for everything, Gene. Appreciate you ready it. You ready for LSU, brother? You ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and take it, man. That's yours. Appreciate it. Yeah, man.